Hi, I'm Doug McKinley, and you're watching Adorama TV. Throughout all the videos I've done over the past few months, if there's one repetitive point I keep banging on about, is to shoot your images in raw file format. Simply, it gives you better dynamic range, better color, and more flexibility. But what I haven't really done yet is to take a closer look at processing those raw files into something more akin to a finished picture. And to do that, we need to use a raw converter. Adorama TV presents Stay focused with Doug McKinley. There's a number of products on the market, including the ones bundled with new cameras. But to get the best from my files, I use Adobe Lightroom. So that's what we'll use today. Now, I've got Lightroom 5 up on the screen, and I've already uploaded a few pictures for us to look at. Lightroom is indeed a raw converter, but it's so much more than that. For professionals, it is the go-to software not only to work on the mechanics of pictures, but to keep track of them as well. It's a fantastic tool for cataloging especially when your picture archive starts to number in the thousands. Let me just say from the start that there is more than one method to do this. Lightroom is a program that is flexible to how individuals work. So the way I'm about to work on these pictures might be totally different on how others do it. But done properly, the end results should be pretty much the same. So let's get started. So I've got Lightroom 5 up on the screen, we've imported some pictures, and we're going to work on one of the RAW files. The one I'm going to choose first is an image of a cargo ship, in the sea and it has a bit of a funny horizon going on, it's sliding off to one side so I want to try and fix that to start with. So at the moment we're in the library mode so we're going to switch to, to develop mode by pressing D on our, our uh, keyboard and then all the tabs will come up on the right hand side of the screen and these are the tabs we're going to use to correct the, the photograph. Now people work in their own way, they, any, there's no real right or wrong to do this, you can do it in any order, just keep in mind that Lightroom is a non-destructive program so it will not be doing any damage to your pictures, won't be changing anything on the actual file, it's, all, it's a copy. So once you bring up the lens correction box, there's two little boxes inside, there's three little boxes, click the top two, which will help uh, take some of the distortion if it's from the lenses and also help with any kind of chromatic problems. As I said before, the horizon is running off to the right, so we want to try and, try and um, straighten that out. And there's two ways of doing this, you can try the auto key in the, in the lens correction tab, it works mostly, but not always. So we'll just quickly reset the picture and do it manually by clicking on the, uh, um, the crop overlay. At the top, it's a little box. It looks like there's a little marching ants around it. And you'll see this grid come up onto the screen on your, on your picture. Hold the cursor off to the right or the left of the, of the, uh, of the frame. Press the, press the mouse key and then adjust manually. And you can just eyeball this. This is how I do most of my shots. Uh, when you're happy with it, with it, if it looks straight to you, then let it go, double click and your picture will come back, come back up. Now from there, I'm gonna close down the lens correction uh, tab and I'm gonna go up to the basics tab at the top here. And these are where I'm gonna do most of my uh, corrections on this image. The first thing I'm gonna do is gonna set the white balance, sorry, the white point and the white and the black point. So you can see that the slider is the white slider and the black's a slider. Hold your uh, mouse uh, cursor over the, the uh, center of the, uh, the white slider, then press the Alt or Command, sorry, the Alt or Control key, and click onto the white, the white slider. You'll see the screen go black. Drag the slider to the right just until you start to see the color come through. Let it go, and that's your, that's your white point set. We'll do the same with the black. Drag it to the left this time. The screen will go white. Drag it to the left this time until you start to see the colors come through, and that's your two point set. Okay, now from there, what I do next is this particular image, I'm not really going to worry too much about the contrast and the exposure because it was shot during a fairly contrasty day but I might bring the exposure down a little smidge just to put a little more punch to it. Then from there I'm going to grab the highlight slider just below that and I'm going to drag that to the left pretty much all the way actually and that's going to help with some of the the cloud in the background. It's going to start getting a little bit of detail in the cloud. Shadows I'm not worrying about. Um, the uh, clarity tool is the next one I want to use. Be careful the clarity, the clarity slider. Too much of it, and you can really sort of make a mess of the picture. Um, it's a, it's a uh, mid-tone contrast adjuster, so we want to drag that to the right a little bit. But let's just go to about around 10-ish. Now, each picture will be different. You may use more, you may use less. It totally depends on, on you as the photographer. Now, I'm not going to touch the vibrance or the saturation because they look pretty good. So I'm going to close that from there. I'm going to close that. And then um, I'm going to try and work on the, on the, on the uh, um, sky a little bit. It could use a little bit of adjustment. So I'm going to use the graduated neutral density option, which is the oblong box at the, the top of the, the uh, toolbars. 
double click on that and then you'll see a whole bunch of more sliders open up and that's where you adjust this. But prior to that though, take your cursor into the middle of the frame somewhere, click on the frame, drag down, you'll see three little lines and a little black box come up and that's going to help. That's, where you're, uh, that's the graduation tool. Now you can adjust this higher or lower on this frame anywhere you want. It's a total, totally up to you. You're, it's completely up to how you like it. Now I'm going to bring the exposure down a little bit. Not too much, but I see a white line sort of um, forming on the horizon a little bit where the sky meets the sea. I'm going to drag the black dot just a little bit below that to try and take that away. I'm going to add a bit of contrast. I'm going to add, I'm going to bring the highlight slider down again. And I'm going to punch up the clarity just a smidge, maybe just five or six. The next step then is we want to do a bit of sharpening. So we'll, we'll zoom in at 100%, click the detail box, and we'll start sharpening. So you grab the amount slider, drag it to the right. I tend to start around 40, and then I take it up in five, sort of increments of five, until I can't see it change anymore. It starts to look a little bit too much. So around 50 for this one looks pretty good. I don't bother the radius of detail. I don't think it does a lot. Uh, and this picture is a fairly bright, it was a bright day when I took the picture, so with, at 100 ISO, so I don't have to worry about, about noise really. But I see this seagull here, and it's kind of really annoying me. It's just not doing this with the photograph. So I'm gonna grab the um, spot removal tool, and I'm gonna click on that, and it's gonna, it's gonna bring up this, this little tool. It's got two circles around it, one in the middle, on the outside, the, between those two circles is where the feathering happens. That's where the computer tries to tries to soften the edges a little bit, so it looks a little more natural. So make sure your tool is uh, um, the inner circle is just bigger than your the, the spot you're trying to remove, which you can adjust by either pushing uh, the slider back and forth or using your mouse. Uh, click on the point you want to remove. The computer will then find a spot on the frame that has similar color, of the pixel, similar intensity and um, we'll remove the spot. Once you're happy with that, close that off, zoom back out. You can go through the whole photograph this way with the spot removal tool and trying to find little bits and pieces that need to come out. Personally, I find the, the tools in Photoshop a little better, so I tend to do, do it later. Now, if you're happy with the image, the next part is to export it to Photoshop. So just go to File, Export, and then your export interface will pop up you can choose a, uh, a file or a folder where to, to, to send it to. You can rename it. Make sure it's a, whatever file format you want to ex export. I also export in TIFF, and then, and then later on I'll, I'll convert to JPEG if I have to. And add any metadata if you want to. And at the bottom it says post-processing after export, and I export it to Photoshop. And that's basically it in a nutshell. I realize this was a quick and dirty explanation of how to process your RAW files, but I encourage you to experiment. Release 6 is out now and has some new and interesting additions such as HDR, photo merge for panoramas and some interesting brushes to make the use of the grad filter that much better. So that's it for me, I'm Doug McKinley for Adorama TV. Don't forget you can also subscribe to Adorama TV for more great videos. And we really want to know what you think, so send us your comments or like and share this video. And don't forget to check out the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find lots more tutorials with great tips and tricks.